Hi everyone, welcome to this RC session by Roda. Uh, just to be clear, I will be picking up a couple of past year CAT papers. I think uh, one of the most important tips that you need to do on your verbal liberty RC is to start picking up past year papers, irrespective of any exam. You pick up CAT, ZAT, NMAT, any exam, it is super critical for you to solve the last 10 to 15 years paper. But let's read this. So it says many human phenomenon and characteristics such as behaviors, beliefs, economies, genes, incomes, life expectancies and other things are influenced both by geographic factors and by non-geographic factors. So if I want to write here, we're talking about human phenomena and characteristics. And these are influenced by both geographic factor and non-geographic factors, right? There's a plus here. So he's saying this is also important. This is also important. Geographic factors mean <coughs> physical and biological factors tied to <coughs> geographic location, including climate, the distributions of wild plant and animal species, soils and topography. <coughs> I think the name itself is sufficient for you to tell you what would geographic factors include. It's about uh, animal species, geographic location, climate and multiple other such similar things. Non-geographic factors include those factors subsumed under the term culture other factors subsumed under the term history and decisions by individual people fair enough so <clears throat> probably i'm going to talk about geographic factors i'll talk about non-geographic factors and then there is other factors and the main focus of the paragraph was that geographic plus non-geographic result in some kind of influence on human phenomenon and characteristics <clears throat> The differences between the current economies of North and South Korea cannot be attributed to the modest environmental differences. Modest means not too much. Environmental is again probably talking about geographic. They are instead due entirely to the different governmental policies. At the opposite extreme, the Inuit and other traditional peoples living north of the Arctic Circle developed warm fur clothes but no agriculture. So if we have to talk about, say, north of Arctic Circle, what did they do? They developed warm fur clothes, right? But they had no agriculture, maybe because it's north of Arctic Circle. While equatorial lowland, so we're talking about equatorial lowland, this is written here, around the world never developed. So these guys did not develop warm fur, but they did develop agriculture. So they did develop, I would say here is agriculture. So there is a difference here. The explanation is straightforwardly geographic <coughs> rather than a cultural or historical quirk unrelated to geography. So this is where geographical factors are coming in, <coughs> right? Uh, Aboriginal Australia remained the sole continent occupied only by hunter-gatherers and with no indigenous farming or herding. So there could be an exception here or maybe not but we just need to write here that we are also getting some information around Australia, <coughs> right? So uh, we are looking at economies of North and South Korea. This is being uh, attributed to the different government policies and not necessarily to modest environmental differences. At the opposite extreme, there is something, this example is being pinned on what? Uh, the explanation is straightforwardly geographic and then there is something about Aboriginal Australia. Why am I doing this mapping here is because if there is an option on Aboriginal Australia or something about Australia, I should know which paragraph or which part of a particular paragraph to come back to. Let's go to this particular paragraph. So here the explanation is biogeographic. So we are talking about Australia here. Remember, always map these keywords because then part this paragraph, a couple of these lines become about Australia. <clears throat> the Australian continent has no domesticable native animal species and few domesticable native plant species. Instead, the crops and domestic animals that now make Australia a food and wool exporter are all non-native brought to Australia by overseas colonists. So, so Australia initially did not have any but now australia has what it is a food plus a wool exporter and these have been brought by overseas colonists 
so maybe people are bringing in might not be as geographic but i'll hold on to my horses but i'm saying that there is some kind of change that is being explained here today no scholar would be silly enough to deny that culture history and individual choices play a big role in many human phenomena that means in other words scholars would happily accept or accept at least that culture history and individual choices do play a big role scholars don't react to cultural historical and individual agent explanations by denouncing by moving out by negating cultural determinism historical determinism or individual determinism and thinking no further in other words we are probably saying that scholars are fine with accepting some part of culture history and individual choices playing a big role but maybe author is coming in many scholars do react to any explanation involving some geographic role by denouncing geographic determinism so i could probably say that scholars here aren't very happy about something called as geographic role in defining human phenomena and characteristics they don't seem to be very happy about it maybe the author would try to argue against the scholars maybe he would try to show that geographic determinism or geographic factors are also important let's see what the paragraph is going to say several reasons may underlie this widespread okay so the author is acknowledging this is a widespread view but nonsensical extremely important point here right now the author would try to be what try to be analytical and try to find out that why this is a nonsensical view one reason so i'm going to map now i'm sure there is going to be yet at least one more reason and i'll start making notes is that some geographic explanations advanced a century ago were racist thereby causing all geographic explanations to become tainted by racist association in the minds of many scholars other than geographers because geography to obviously will take its own context but many genetic historical psychological and anthropological explanations advanced a century ago were also racist so the, isn't the author trying to say that if you are denouncing geographical factors calling them as racist then your reasons were also racist why are you denouncing geographic reasons only yet the validity of newer non racist genetic etc explanations is widely accepted today so the author is maybe trying to make a case against the scholars when they are denouncing geographical factors overall if you see a keyword here would be racism right another reason for reflex rejection of geographic explanations is that historians have a tradition in their discipline of stressing the role of contingency so i think the keyword here that i will take out will be what contingency a favorite word among historians based on individual decision and chance so about individualistic decision and chance become some more important thing for what factors would be often that view is warranted okay the author acknowledges it but often too that view is unwarranted very very important line because this is where author is putting out his claim the development of farm fur clothes among the inuit living north of the arctic circle was not because one good influential inuit leader persuaded other to adopt warm fur clothes that means he's trying to say that it was not largely dependent on contingency which was based on individual decision for no good environmental reason so isn't he trying to say that your contingency point for individual decisions is not something which is primarily full proof a third reason is that geographic explanations usually depend on detailed technical facts of geography and other fields of scholarship most historians and economists don't acquire the detailed knowledge as part of the professional training so the third paragraph would probably the third reason in fact would be about that these historians or some scholars who are denouncing did not have a professional training in geography and therefore they are denouncing it so three reasons racism contingency and professional training and i think this is where largely the central idea would revolve around if i have a central idea question because most of the paragraph from author's perspective is analysis moves around uh, the fact that uh, a lot of people were denouncing geographical factors and the author is probably trying to give me the reason why these scholars used to do that doesn't seem to be very happy about it not explicitly though as much as a clear claim would look like but i could see the author moving slightly against the scholars when they are denouncing geographical determinism perfect let's try to do this question here so all of the following can be inferred from the passage except <clears throat> on these kind of questions i have always and always said forget what except is assume that there is no except 
So all of the following can be inferred. That means out of four options, you could infer three options. And aren't these three options easier to find because you would find evidence of something back in the paragraph. And then something which may be an out of the scope or a contradictory could be an except. And then you would have your answer for except. Agricultural practices changed drastically in the Australian continent after it was colonized. Remember, it did not have anything. And then it became a foreign wool and something around that exporter after it was colonized. So I can say that it changed. Now, remember, why am I using the word drastically is because there was nothing. And then you have gone on to become an exporter. So I can say that there were a considerable change. And a considerable change can be defined as the word drastically. Can be, right? So it's not a bad option that I cannot infer. I mean, the sessions you would see, I am very particular about adverbial forms that can you actually say drastically? And there needs to be enough evidence back in the paragraph to even put out this word drastically. I kind of understand that you might have this uh, point in your mind that, sir, how are we doing drastically here? Here is the explanation. So it's not a bad option, at least. It's an option that I can keep on hold. I might find other three options slightly better inferences than I might eliminate option number A because of the word drastically, but let's keep it on hold. Individual dictact and contingency were not the causal factors for the use of fur clothing in some very cold climates. That example uh, in the second last paragraph that it was not fairly dependent on contingency and one leader was not influencing. That means I can say that it was not the causal factor. So fair inference. While most human phenomena result from culture and individual choice, some have biogeographic origins. Now, while I agree that human phenomena, look at the part that I'm underlining, human phenomena result from this have biogeographic origins. This is looks fine, but where did I find most and some? Aren't these slightly claim and numerical driven most and something? I'm fine, you would say that there are factors that define human phenomena and characteristics but which one is a most which one is a some probably not so this option probably becomes a good option for me this is an inference so i'll cut it in the eyes of option number c i'll cut option number a right several academic studies of human phenomena in the past involved racist interpretations remember the first point was about racist so this can be inferred and therefore this can be inferred, this can be inferred, this can be inferred, therefore this not be an answer, not be the answer, not be the answer, your final answer would be option number C. Fair? Brilliant question. I love cat passages. We'll do more of them. Let's go to the second one. All of the following are advanced by the author as reasons why non-geographers discard geographic influences on human phenomena except so again i'll forget this except three reasons i guess right one was around racism the other one was around contingency and the third one was around the knowledge professional knowledge right so something beyond this could be an option so i am looking at an option that could probably not talk about any of these scope or maybe talk about these scope but the tone could be biased it could go either way but this is a better representation of picking up an option. Let me use this. Dismissal of explanations that involve geographical causes for human behavior. This seems to be a slightly more strict word. They were probably not dismissing it. So what I would do here is I would keep this option on hold. Now you would say, sir, they don't agree. Disagree, not agreeing is not necessarily dismissal. This word dismissal is a slightly stricter word. What am I doing is I'm keeping this option on hold. I'm not saying it's the answer here. Belief in the central role of humans unrelated to physical surrounding in influencing phenomena. This is contingency. So I think this is one of the reasons why non-geographers disregard. So this will not be an answer. Lingering impressions of past geographic analysis that were politically offensive could be racism. So this is also being given as a reason. Disciplinary training, which typically does not include technical, this is here and therefore this will also not be an answer. Pretty forward my answer is option number A because of the word dismissal. Again, do you see how did this note making help me? Just smaller keyword note making help me understand one of the more difficult passages and do it say under 30 seconds. The final answer is option number A. Let's go to the next question. 
the examples of the inured and aboriginal australians are offered in the passes to show that there could be geographic factors multiple other things for human phenomenon and characteristic i'm looking at an option which is a paraphrase close paraphrase to this how environmental factors led to comparatively divergent as different paths and livelihoods it wasn't about divergent paths at all human resourcefulness across cultures and adapting the paragraph was not about adapting it was just showing example of factors influencing something how physical circumstances can dictate human behavior and culture behavior is phenomenon characteristics and physical circumstances makes sense in you were about those wool australians around those vegetation so a and b are eliminated c seems to be an option i would keep on hold for now that despite geographical isolations uh, traditional societies were self sufficient and adaptive again this was not the intention here this will not be an answer the answer would be option number c i think this is one question i should have and i would have gotten every time i would have attempted so one this the one before this two out of three is a fair choice till now and this is the last question the author criticizes scholars who are not geographers for all of the following reason except again understand there is no except so what am i trying to do is i'm trying to find out reasons why is the author criticizing scholars who are not geographers i think the last three paragraph should do the trick for me their rejection of the role of biogeographic factors in social and cultural phenomena okay makes sense their outdated interpretations i think it was not about outdated interpretations they were rejecting the role but i think this is a slightly slightly out of the scope thing so i would say this may be a reason b is an option i would keep on hold their labeling of geographic explanations are deterministic fair they were saying that's deterministic and we're not considering it so again not an answer the importance they place on the role of individual decisions when studying human phenomena this remember was about contingency and the author was saying that this was not contingency and therefore the author was trying to criticize scholars there so the final answer here would be option number b perfect this is one question i would have probably struggled a little in terms of getting it right in the first 10 seconds but if you would have understood that outdated interpretation is something which the author hasn't discussed as a keyword i would have probably solved this question i hope you love the session i loved doing a past year cat rc practice i'm sure i'll probably try to put all of cat 2023 22 2021 20, on the channel please do comment and tell me if you like the session i will be doing a series on cat rcs as well and zat rcs as well thank you so much and i'll see you guys in the next session bye bye